Hey guys, Death Letter Magic here, and I have a follow-up. I'm so glad I asked for it because something wasn't right with what went on at that Star City Games tournament. I'm talking about Abe Corrigan versus uh, that other dude. So it appeared that he tried to hide the fact that he kept an Assassin's Trophy in hand instead of in the graveyard, but like blatantly right in front of his opponent and some judges. Like, Nobody in their right mind would possibly think they're going to get away with that. And yeah, Assassin's Trophy, one of the better cards in the deck, theoretically. Pretty useful card. It looked bad, but what the hell are you going to do against a Carnage Tyrant? Which, this is not game one. He knew what was in his deck. So, something seemed really fishy. So, uh, Abe reached out to me with a comment on his side of the story. And things are starting to look a little bit different. By the way, I know I'm going to forget, so I'll mention it now. Fabrizio from the um, other video just threatened to sue me. So let me just reply to that right now. Um, suck it, asshole. I said the entire time, I don't know if you're cheating, but it looks really bad. And there was a lot of, to me it looks like, in my opinion, I don't know. So yeah, take it to court, asshole. Go for it. So to quickly summarize what Abe said, uh, first he mentions that the coverage was crap. Um, if you're not familiar with Star City Games announcers, they're dicks. They'll talk crap about players. They will absolutely talk crap about their decks. If they don't think it's built the right way, or they don't like a sideboarding decision, their superiority complex will be on display for 30 minutes straight. They will not shut up about it. Pretty much all of them are just notoriously unprofessional, immature dicks. And I think they can get away with it because some people like watching that and because it's not like a formal actual Grand Prix. It's just like a blah whatever tournament. And also Star City Games themselves are just a really dickish, unfair, rude, obnoxious company. Constantly, they're accused of ripping people off by like manipulating prices and getting advanced information. They deny it, of course. So we don't know if it's really true, but I mean, some stuff that they have provably done was pretty shady. So bad company, bad tournament, bad announcers, bad judges. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started. And ta-da, bad coverage with rude announcers. I'm shocked. But anyway, what we were watching was game three of over a two hour long match, okay? Game one was not on camera, and Abe ended up uh, naturally milling his opponent out, which means his opponent simply ran out of cards. Now, I've done this on Arena, and it took like 30 minutes, so yeah. Guys, it's almost like, <gasps> could it be? There's too many control cards in Standard? Never in a million years would I have guessed that. So that's tedious, and he knew every single card in his opponent's uh, deck at that point. He knows how he wins, he knows how the deck works. So then for game two, they moved him onto camera. They moved the match onto camera, I should say. And game two, he lost to Carnage Tyrant, of course, because that thing's just the worst. So this is at the end of a day, which he's very tired from, very stressful matches, and he's now in the top eight, I believe he was. Well, at least like top 32, I think. I'm not really sure how they structure them. So suddenly it's been all day of playing Magic, you know, very carefully. And now, ta-da, you're suddenly on camera, you won the first round, and now there's, as he put it, 20,000 people watching. I can't verify that, that seems high to me. Well, that'll throw you off a bit, especially when he just lost round two on camera. So then we go into game three, and he assures me he would never cheat, he doesn't go into tournaments with the intention to cheat, that is just not him. So the judge at the table, not his opponent, noticed the mistake of holding the Assassin's Trophy in hand, and they just fixed it, which is why the game proceeded. So while the announcers were being immature little dicks, they were not uh, accurately portraying what was happening. I know, I'm shocked. Have you ever seen an interview with either of them? Yeah, they're wonderful people. I was obviously just having fun editing it for entertainment purposes in the last video and going complete hyperbole with it. I don't actually have any respect for either of them or anybody who works at Star City Games or anybody who works at any of the tournaments. So that's why they just fixed it. He had a reasonable um, reason, which is why he didn't get, like, a, probably even a warning, honestly. It was just like, oh, whoops, I thought something happened. It didn't. Okay, let's fix it. Boom, move on with the game. No disqualification, no accusation of cheating, nothing. From the judge that saw it happen in real time. Kind of telling. So he says, I motioned to the crisis and elf in my graveyard because I assumed I had somehow discarded one of them instead of the Assassin's Trophy, which, I mean, seems like a long shot, but I mean, you know, long day, on camera, high pressure, okay. So he thought he had put a card into the graveyard. Like, he thought, okay, that's what I did after targeting it, and then he looks down and it's, it's not the right card in the graveyard. And so he knew it was in his hand, I guess is what he's saying. He just thought that he accidentally dropped a wrong one in or something. 
Well, as he said, he did the math. He knew what he was holding. He knew that he could triple drop the creatures. And then he also knew that his opponent could use Memorial to go get a Chupacabra. He had already acknowledged that and planned ahead. So he already knew he lost, and you can't kill a Carnage Tyrant with an Assassin's Trophy. Killing the Chupacabra wouldn't do anything either. The ETB would still be on the stack. So he knew he had already lost the game. He planned ahead. He's like, well, unless my opponent screws it up, I've lost, and an Assassin's Trophy won't do anything to, to win. So why would he purposely hold it in his hand? directly in front of a judge and then immediately get caught. So as, you know, far-fetched as it seems like, oh, I thought I put it in the graveyard and then I thought it was the wrong card. Like, that just seems like what somebody would say. Everything all together makes me think that he wasn't cheating and that it wasn't on purpose. So Abe talked to the judge later and even he agreed it was not intentional. It was weird, but whatever. It was just a mistake and the game, you know, went on. Like, they didn't even stop the game. So anyway, that's his side of the story. I think it makes more logical sense than, oh, look what this person tried to pull off, especially with no history of him cheating ever. So honestly, I think it's just a warning. Be very, very, very careful when you're playing. Don't let the pressure get to you. Just ignore it. Focus on the cards. Get a lot of sleep. Have a lot of caffeine. If that helps you focus, it really doesn't help me focus. It does the opposite. Have a good solid breakfast. I mean, all this stuff, people think, oh, I'm just sitting there playing cards. Oh, no. No, 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 this is stressful, and using your brain heavily actually burns a lot of calories, believe it or not, and you have to replace them. A friend of mine actually had to drop out. He was doing amazingly at a Grand Prix. He had to drop out because he skipped breakfast, and he's, you know, a bigger dude. I think he's um, diabetic, and he just, he was getting so woozy and tired, and they, they didn't have any food except for, like, across the street, and he just didn't have time to, to go get anything because he was playing a really slow deck. So he basically had to drop for health reasons, and he probably would have won the tournament. This was years ago, by the way. So that sucks. So don't underestimate the physical side of it, the mental toll, the concentration required, and don't let the pressure get to your head. And honestly, this is why I would be really good at uh, professional magic, because that kind of stuff doesn't bother me at all. Like the pressure, the panic, the, you know, your brain switches off, and like, let's say you're like in a restaurant, and all of a sudden there's flames and smoke and the kitchen's on fire and the alarms go off and they're like, fire everybody out. I wouldn't like panic a new heartbeat. I have the weirdest reaction to like hyper stressful, dangerous situations, which is no reaction whatsoever. I don't know what's like broken in my brain, but I mean, I'm one of the rare people who was just born without a fear of public speaking. I don't even understand at a basic level, anybody who's afraid of public speaking. I'll get up in front of 10,000 people and jump on a microphone and just say something. It, it's like, I don't care. I don't even understand why somebody would care. It, it's such a foreign concept to me. So to me, they'd be like, oh, 20,000 people are watching and you're on camera. Whatever. I don't, I don't care. But I'm going to take a wild guess that the other 99% of society isn't like that. So if you ever go into a Grand Prix Magic Fest Mythic Tour Pro Magic, I, I don't, I don't even know anymore. Focus on reducing the whole oh no, people are watching me, oh no, I'm doing well, self-destructive mental state, like concentration failure. I mean, you can learn it from like firearms training, how to like stay cool, focus, and just take the shot. But I'm not sure how well that would translate to magic. Unless you're some weird, like not wired correct freak like me. So anyway, yeah, that is a big factor. Ask any pro player, the pressure can get to you if you're not used to it. And uh, I don't think Abe's, you know, top aided like eight tournaments in a row or something. But uh, yeah, that's both sides of the story. Take it for what you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.